Okay, let's get it started. Uh, good morning, everybody. So hopefully you guys had uh, a nice weekend. Um, so before I uh, start giving the review of the um, things we covered last time, is there any question that you would like to ask? Okay. If not, then... Um, Let's see what we've done uh, uh, so far as far as the uh, review of the uh, probability is concerned. So uh, we went through some of the definitions of the probability, starting by the uh, essentially the uh, definition by intuition. And then we looked at the uh, non-experimental approach, where we um, essentially looked at the um, definition of probability based on um, a priori, counting the number of, um, you know, occurrence of an event, and then divided by uh, the total number of um, uh, possible outcomes of the experiment, and then that ratio would be essentially the probability of uh, an event A. Uh, we also said that we can compute this. Um, we can essentially uh, evaluate um, the same uh, um, uh, uh, probability of, of, of the event A, using an experimental approach where we essentially go ahead and uh, perform an experiment and um, keep the number of uh, times that, you know, the, the event of interest um, uh, happens and then that the ratio between that number to the overall uh, number of times that we perform the experiment would be essentially an estimate of the probability. Um, and finally, we defined um, uh, essentially that... Uh, modern probability, which was based on the axioms of um, uh, uh, probability. And this is essentially what, uh, uh, what is the approach that we want to um, uh, follow in this class. So in order to do that, we went ahead and defined some of the elements of uh, what we need in order to define the probability and the probability space. Um, and uh, in particular, we looked at the definition of the set, uh, you know, the subset, um, and importantly, sample set, uh, the, the sample space, or set of the elementary events or the certain event. Okay, so this would essentially be one major component of our probability space, um, uh, which we need to uh, deal with and, and work with. Um, also, we, uh, we uh, essentially looked at the subsets of omega. And uh, later on, we found that the subsets of omega are... Um, uh, essentially, uh, building blocks uh, of um, an object called uh, a field. And with respect to the probability space in particular, we were interested in, uh, we were interested in a particular field, um, uh, which was called a sigma algebra or sigma field. Uh, so according um, to our definition, um, in order to define a field, we need to work with a set. Here we were working with a set of um, the uh, elementary outcomes or, or the sample space, uh, omega. And then uh, we looked at a um, collection of subsets of uh, this omega. And um, uh, we then looked at three conditions. If, if those collection of subsets of omega uh, would satisfy, <coughs> then we would call, um, you know, those collection of uh, subsets a uh, field. Okay. And in particular, the sigma field was essentially a field that was closed under uh, countably infinite uh, set of unions and intersections, um, which we denoted by, uh, you know, union uh, from i equals 1 to infinity of ai and intersection i equals 1 to infinity of ai. Okay. Um, so having uh, defined the... Uh, sigma algebra, then we were kind of ready to uh, look at the definition of the probability space or the probability triple. Um, we said that a probability space uh, is a triple um, omega, um, the, the sample space, f, the sigma algebra, and p, which was a function, we called it the probability measure function or the probability function or the measure function. Um, so uh, this probability function was essentially defined uh, over the sigma algebra f. Uh, 
So essentially, it uh, maps the um, subsets of omega from the sigma algebra to uh, a number between 0 and 1. Okay? Uh, and in order to um, um, define P, we need to make sure that it satisfies, you know, uh, major three uh, conditions, which was essentially the axioms of uh, probability. And uh, these three conditions are uh, that the probability of a set uh, or an event um, in the uh, sigma algebra has to be non-negative. We have to have the probability on the um, sample space equal 1. And the probability of A union B has to be P of A plus P of B if A and B are disjoint. Okay? And using these three conditions, we can essentially derive other relationships as far as the prob probability on the sets uh, are concerned. Okay? So, um, <coughs> as far as the um, um, uh, sigma algebra is concerned, we mentioned that um, uh, essentially the smallest sigma algebra is going to be a set consisting of omega and the empty set, okay? And the largest sigma algebra is going to be um, the collection of all subsets of omega, which is going to be the power set of omega. Okay. Now, um, a note related to uh, probability space here is that we have um, probability measure zero set B okay, is such that probability of B is equal to zero and this is that essentially B never happens okay Okay, and uh, let us um, keep in mind that this probability is function is sometimes, you know, is referred to as the measure function, or essentially a probability measure function. So these are all the same. Okay. Any questions? So then we looked at, um, you know, a simple example of tossing a coin. In this case, capital omega was essentially the set of H and T. Uh, sigma field uh, would be here set of H, T, omega, and phi. Um, so in this sense, uh, this uh, set F essentially satisfied all the conditions of the um, field that we required, those three conditions. Now, in, in those sense... Um, set F, which is uh, consisting of H, omega, and phi, is not going to be a sigma algebra because it's not a field since H is inside F, but the complement of H, which is T, is not inside H. So this is um, not a sigma field. Okay. And um, once we know the sigma field, once we know the sigma algebra, we can define essentially probabilities on uh, elements inside F. And for a fair uh, coin, we had essentially probability of H equals probability of T uh, being equal to one-half. Okay. So um, 
then we define the conditional probability of an event if we know that some other event B has already happened. Um, we also mentioned the uh, famous Bayes rule, which has to do with evaluation of the conditional probabilities, and then we uh, went ahead and um, defined uh, random variables, essentially as a mapping between two measure space. One measure space was um, the um, the space of omega f okay, uh, to a space of R, which when we define, you know, um, a border field um, uh, on R. Okay, so essentially, random variable takes an um, outcome uh, of the random experiment and then maps it to a number on the real line. Okay, and then um, we can extend this definition and essentially look at the look at the um, image of um, a set inside the sigma algebra, uh, which would be essentially an interval uh, on the real line. And that interval in the definition of this um, measure space mapping would be essentially a subset um, uh, of, of a Borel uh, sigma algebra on the real line. Okay. So uh, to be technically correct, we have to also men uh, make sure that the inverse image of any uh, Borel subset in R um, correspond to an event in the sigma algebra. Yes? So are you saying that one of those lines cannot go from the blue area to the to the real number line? That's what that remark means, right? Yes, it could. You know, if, um, so you can define, you know, another, uh, you know, essentially red region, which would be an event yeah. in the sigma algebra, and then under the action of X, this would be essentially mapped to a different you know, area on the, the, a different interval on the real line. Okay? Any other questions? Okay. And we also emphasize that in order to um, come up with probabilities on intervals on real line, then one way of figuring out that probability is to go back to the uh, probability space of the experiment on which this random variable is defined and then compute the probability on the you know outcomes and the sets in the sigma algebra okay so one example of that uh, would be um, uh, for instance to uh, looking uh, to look at the um, uh, uh, the tossing a uh, coin example. So, um, <coughs> where we can define, for instance, a random variable x omega to be 1 if omega is h. So, we toss a coin. If it's head, then we set x equals 1. And if it's tail, then we set x omega equals t. Uh, equals zero. Okay, so um, now, <coughs> so x omega now is a random variable. Is a random variable. Okay, we can assign probabilities to essentially values of x for instance uh, probability of x being between 3 and 4 is what? is 0 because this is um, probability, this uh, is essentially probability of getting an empty set, uh, because this never happens, so this would be equal to zero. So now, uh, essentially this is uh, the uh, a set on real line. Now we are going back to the probability space to see what outcome omega would generate this interval on the real line 
Okay, and um, uh, then we assign probability on that set. Okay, now this is just the empty set, and the probability of the empty set is equal to zero. Um, obviously, probability of uh, zero smaller than x smaller than one would be probability of getting a tail, okay, which is equal to one over two uh, for a fair coin. Okay. And probability of zero x less than or equal to two is probability of omega, which is equal to one. So, so the message here is that um, essentially, you know, in, in all these calculations, um, every set such as x equals x or x1 equals x less than x less than x2 and blah blah is related to an event defined on omega. Okay, so we also gave the uh, general formula for this, and um, essentially you know, the probability of, of an interval B, um, so this is a Borel subset, is equal to probability of the inverse of this B, and this is equal to probability of the outcomes omega, such that x omega falls in that interval. Okay? And this is how we can assign probabilities on intervals on real line um, if we know the mapping x and if we know the probability space on which uh, the mapping x is defined. Okay? Okay. So um, let's continue with with our lecture. Um, we can extend, you know, this calculation of uh, probabilities of intervals on real line um, to um, uh, some essentially, you know, generic uh, intervals. Uh, so one of them is essentially the probability distribution function at the capital PDF or um, uh, cumulative distribution function CDF. And this is um, denoted by F, uh, capital X, uh, little x. So here the notation is that x is um, essentially a random variable, and little x okay, uh, is realization of a random variable. Okay. So we try to be consistent with this notation as, as much as possible. Okay. So um, uh, the PDF is, is defined as the probability of x being less than or equal to x. So if I know x and I know the mapping x and the probability space, I can assign this probability. Okay? And according to our definition, we go back to the um, sample space and, and the probability space. And this would be the probability on a set of outcomes for which we have x omega is less than x, okay? So um, going back um, to our definition of a random variable, this would be essentially uh, uh, the probability of an interval from minus infinity to some value x. And going back, you know, to a set here, which would be essentially the inverse image of this interval. 
So this is called the uh, probability distribution function. Okay. And uh, there are some, you know, properties uh, that can be derived by this definition. <coughs> uh, first of all, fx of infinity is equal to 1 uh, because um, uh, probability of x being less than infinity is, of course, 1. Um, x is defined from minus infinity to plus infinity, which is the real line. And therefore, uh, for sure, it's going to be less than infinity. And of course, uh, fx of minus infinity would be equal to 0 because it cannot be less than minus infinity. Okay? Now, um, by this definition, fx is a non-decreasing non function. Okay? And in particular, if we have x1 smaller than x2, then the corresponding probabilities are also smaller. Okay, so now there is here a notation um, uh, that we have to somehow um, uh, obey, and that is that fx is supposed to be continuous from right. Okay, so that means that um, by definition fx is defined as the limit of a positive epsilon going to zero of fx uh, x plus epsilon. Okay, so. Um, we will see this in, in a bit. That, what does it mean? Now, <coughs> if I have a random variable whose um, PDF or CDF is continuous and differentiable, then I can define <coughs> um, a function called the probability density function, not the distribution function, or little PDF. Um, this is the notation that they pick in uh, you know, some of the probability books uh, as the derivative of fx, the CDF, with respect to x. Okay. And it has a whole, you know, um, number of uh, properties. Uh, the, the most important ones being that fx is strictly non-negative okay, for any random variable. And the integral from minus infinity to plus infinity, or the range of the definition of x, is going to be 1. So it has to add up to 1. And um, um, fx can also be calculated from the uh, probability density function uh, uh, by integrating from minus infinity to, to little x. Okay, that, that would be probability of x smaller than x. And if we want to know what is the probability of um, a random variable being between two numbers, we would just need to integrate our density function, you know, from those two uh, limits. And of course, you know, for sufficiently uh, small interval uh, that we assume, we would have um, um, the probability of x being um, between x and, you know, x plus delta x would be fx uh, times delta x. So if this is, um, you know, the CDF, which has to go to 1, uh, so this is fx, and this is x. Then the derivative of this function is called the PDF. Okay. x, fx. Uh, so we know that fx has to be um, non-negative. And then this last line essentially corresponds to... Um, area under the uh, density curve uh, where I have here x and this is x plus delta x. Okay, and this area is obviously fx uh, times delta x and this is a probability of um, this random variable x being between x and x plus delta x. Okay, any questions? Okay, so I'm going fast because obviously you guys have all seen this. Uh, it's just a, um, a reminder, hopefully. Um, so we have different types of random variables. Um, you know, one, one uh, first type is going to be the discrete random variables where um, the CDF is uh, piecewise constant. Okay. Um, um, so this is, you know, uh, a cartoon of a CDF 
of, of a discrete random variable, um, and uh, the fact that I have these um, uh, essentially solid circles uh, here. This is just referring to our notation where um, this is um, uh, this function is continuous from right. Okay, so if there's this discontinuity. Um, uh, the value of function right at the discontinuity has to be um, uh, equal to the right uh, uh, values. Um, now, uh, the jumps here between, um, you know, these constant values are essentially um, what we have as far as the <coughs> probability of uh, any of these uh, values uh, are concerned. So this is nothing but P of J. Okay. And these P of J's are called the probability mass functions. Or PMF. Okay. Uh, so this is a discrete random variable, and it can take a finite, uh, you know, uh, um, or, or countable number of um, occurrence as far as the outcome of x is concerned. So x can be either x1, x2, xj, and according to any of, um, and in order to have any of these values, um, we have an, uh, essentially a probability uh, associated with uh, each of these values. For instance, x can be xj with probability pj. pj okay? And the summation of these little probabilities has to add up to 1 according to definition of our CDF. So um, sometimes you can, um, uh, sometimes it's beneficial to uh, represent this um, little fx, the uh, mass function, uh, in the form of a continuous function. And you can just do it by the um, uh, direct delta function, where f of x is summation over all possible um, outcomes and the probability of any possible value times uh, delta x uh, minus xi. Okay, so essentially uh, we can write this in the form of a uh, continuous function. Now, one example of um, discrete random variables is the Bernoulli random variable. Of course, there are many other discrete random variables, uh, but it's defined um, by this uh, equation where x is equal to 1 with probability p. Okay, and p is a number between 0 and 1. And it's zero with probability one minus p. Okay. And in this case, uh, the mass function is represented as p to the power x times one minus p to the power one minus x. And I have an indicator function here stating that if x is not equal to zero or one, then this guy is equal to zero. Okay. Okay. Now, uh, for continuous random variables, the CDF is the continuous function of x, as, as is shown here. Okay. And um, uh, the derivative is, is, is fx. Again, there are many random variables that are continuous. Uh, for instance, you know, Gaussian random variable or uniform random variable. Okay. One thing just to um, uh, refresh is that for a continuous random variable, okay, um, the probability of x equals to some little x0 is what? Is 0. Okay? So we cannot uh, have x, I mean, the, the measure associated with a, a single realization of x is equal to 0. Okay? For continuous random variables, probabilities are assigned to intervals, not, uh, you know, uh, single numbers. Okay. Um, so um, we will often see, you know, Gaussian and random variables. So let me just um, uh, 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 briefly, you know, remind everybody what, uh, what these are. So x is normal uh, new sigma square. Um, the Gaussian random variable is defined by two parameters, um, the mean, which is referred to as uh, mu or x bar, uh, 
and the variance sigma square, and sigma is the standard deviation. The form of the PDF is, is given here. It's an exponential function of x, okay? And it, it, it has the famous bell shape, and the more variance you have, the more spread the curve is, and the less variance we have, uh, the less spread the curve is. As far as the uniform random variable is concerned, you can define it, you know, on any interval of finite size, um, A and B, and the value of the PDF is constant, equal to 1 over B minus 1, uh, B minus A, in order to have um, a unit integral from A to B. Okay, so essentially the probability of um, equal size intervals between A and B is equal uh, for random for a uniform random variable, but this is not true for the Gaussian random variable where the measure is not constant over the support of this random variable. Um, the mean or expectation of a random variable um, in different books is um, referred to with different notations. Um, we would use, you know, um, pretty much. Uh, the first one, or sometimes you know the other ones as well, um, but the bracket is essentially the um, uh, expectation operator, okay, which is essentially the integral from minus to infinity to plus infinity of x, f x dx, okay, where f x is the uh, PDF is the density function. The variance uh, is denoted by sigma square of x. It's the expectation of x minus average of x to the power 2, okay, which is equal to expectation of x square minus uh, square of expectation of x. And it's computed from these integrals. <coughs> so this can be generalized to, to the case moment, where we essentially define the mk the case moment of x as the integral of xk, x to the power k, fx dk, dx. Okay. So these are the moments of a random variable x. Okay, so um, sometimes we have um, a random variable x for which we know the PDF and, and the CDF. And we have another random variable, y, which is a function of the random variable x, and this function is differentiable. Okay? Now, having the information on x helps us to compute things like PDF or CDF on y using you know, simple transformation rules, and one of them is, is reported here. So the assumption here is that I know everything about x, and I know this function... Uh, g, which is differentiable, and I want to, for instance, calculate the density function of y. Okay? So, um, first of all, the CDF of y is probability of y being less than y. This is by definition. Now, this is nothing but probability of g of x, which is equal to y being smaller than y. Okay? So, the PDF of y is uh, computed from this formula. This is summation over some terms, which I'll uh, just describe, of the um, density function of x okay, over the derivative of g with respect to x evaluated at some points xi. Okay. So um, xi's are essentially the roots of an equation which is uh, consisting of y equals u of x. Okay. So this essentially um, means that... Um, um, you know, I have this um, uh, function g of x, and this is my y. So I look at one particular value y, okay, and then I look at the roots um, of y equals g of x, which would be, for instance, here x1 and x2, okay? So essentially, this little i, the Index i refers to the index of the roots of an equation of um, y equals g of x. Okay. Now, 
In this case, because we want to have everything as a function of y, this xi has to be a function of y. Okay. Um, uh, if, if you open any, you know, uh, probability book, uh, you would be able to uh, essentially uh, follow the derivation of this equation. It, it's quite intuitive um, uh, to, to, to derive. Okay. Uh, but let me give you um, uh, an example here, hopefully to, um, uh, to clarify uh, how to perform this kind of calculation. Um, so let's assume that we have a random variable fxx, okay? Um, and then I want to know the PDF of a random variable ax square uh, plus b, okay? So this is essentially going to be, let's say, a function like this. This is my y. This is my x, okay, and this is going to be now a y equals y would give me two roots, okay. So one of them is equal to so my x one equals to minus one over a square root of y minus b, and this guy would be one over a square root of y minus b. Okay, so here I assume that, uh, for instance, a and b are positive. Then, uh, in order to evaluate the um, PDF of y, okay, I would need to just um, add up two terms. So I have fx of minus 1 over a square root of y minus b, okay, divided by absolute value of 2a times minus 1 over a square root of 1 minus b plus the second term corresponding to the second root, 1 over a square root of 1 minus b over absolute value of 2a times 1 over a square root of 1 minus b. Now, one thing that we have to keep in mind is that if you want to have a complete definition, we have to make sure that the value of y is um, within the domain of y. So this entails to multiplying this by an indicator function i where it says that y has to be um, larger or equal than b, okay? Or essentially, this uh, uh, random variable y is defined for values of y larger than or equal to b, okay? So uh, a note here is that if we want to evaluate, you know, the expectation of or, you know, the, the integral statistics of random variable y, um, then we can use both the uh, PDF of y or PDF of x, okay? So for instance here, the expectation of y, the mean of y, is integral over the support of y, okay, of y f y dy, and this is essentially the same as looking at the expectation over the support of x, g of x, which is y, f of x dx. Okay, so we will use this notion quite a bit um, later on, um, where we have a random variable y as a function of a bunch of other random variables, then we don't need to go ahead and calculate the PDF of y in order to compute the statistics of y. We can always work with the PDF of x, the building block random variables, and then um, compute the statistics. Okay, now, uh, obviously in many, um, you know, real applications, we don't have a single random variable, and we have a multiple random variables that we have to um, uh, uh, handle. 
Um, so it's natural to uh, look at, you know, um, a combination of multiple random variables and the relationships between each other. And um, so here we start with just two random variables and extend it to, to multiple random variables. So, um, um, so x and y are two random variables. Then uh, we can essentially look at the dependency and the relationship between um, these two random variables by the joint distribution of x and y or the joint density of x and y. Okay. So um, the um, uh, distribution function of x and y um, um, uh, uh, denoted by f uh, sub xy um, is the probability of x being smaller than some little x and y being smaller than some little y. Okay, so this is uh, the definition of the distribution of x and y. Okay, and if um, um, the distribution function is continuous and differentiable, then we can go ahead and um, essentially compute the derivatives of uh, this function with respect to um, x and y and um, uh, come up with the uh, joint density of uh, x and y. Okay, so for instance, the joint density of x and y is the second derivative of um, f(x) with respect to x and y. And um, similar to the one-dimensional case, um, uh, the probability of uh, x and y being between x and x plus delta x and y plus delta x uh, plus delta y can be computed from the um, uh, density function. In other words. Um, f of um, x, y, x, y times delta x, delta y equals to probability of x smaller than, smaller than x plus delta x and y smaller than y plus delta y. So here, you know, the PDF and the CDF are the are essentially two-dimensional uh, functions. Now, if I'm given the joint distribution function of x and y, I can go ahead and compute the marginal distribution of x and y, which is essentially looking at one of those random variables alone, uh, you know, irrespective of the other random variable. So, for instance, the um, uh, uh, CDF of x is going to be um, <coughs> the CDF of xy evaluated at some little x and infinity. Okay, so th this means that I let y to be somewhere between minus infinity to plus infinity, and then I look at the probability of x being less than some value x. Okay, so this is essentially um, probability of x being less than little x and y being less than infinity. Okay. Or similarly, I can uh, go ahead and calculate the CDF of y, which is the marginal uh, distribution of y, by um, using the uh, joint distribution of x and y. So this was for um, the uh, distribution function. Now I can uh, look at the marginal density function, which is the density of uh, on, on x and y. And this can be calculated by integration of the uh, joint density uh, function of x and y from minus infinity uh, to plus infinity. For instance, if I want to um, calculate fx of x, this would be the integral of x, fxy uh, dy. Okay, um, from minus infinity to plus infinity. Okay, so can anybody tell um, or remind us how to um, derive this equation from uh, the definition of the marginal um, uh, distribution function? So if, if the marginal distribution function of x is, is calculated from this equation, which is kind of intuitive, um, 
y should be um, little fx, the integral of fx y d y. Notice that this is less intuitive than the, than the previous one. Okay. So we all, you know, are used to the fact that if, if I need the marginal density, I would just integrate y out, and that, that would give me the marginal over x. Um, but there's an <coughs> explanation behind this. So um, fx of x, by definition, is fxy. X, one, x infinity, okay, which is integral from minus infinity to x of dx c uh, f x y of x c comma y dy, okay. And <coughs> now I know that. Um, we know that fx x is partial partial x fx x sorry this is capital okay so what i would need to do is to differentiate this integral okay in which the limit is a function of little x with respect to x okay so how can I do this? Any thoughts? Okay, so this is the essentially the, the Leibniz rule. So in this case Fx of x would be equal to minus infinity to plus infinity. Essentially, we're going to evaluate this integrand at c equals x. So this would be f x y of x y dy. Similarly, we can um, derive an equation for the density function of, of y, which is the integral from minus infinity to plus infinity of fxy. Now, uh, there are several properties of, you know, um, uh, between x and y, which, which are quite important to, um, to mention. Um, one of the most important one is um, the notion of independency between x and y. So by definition, x and y are, are said to be independent if we can factor the CDF or the PDF of x and y. Okay? So if the form of x and y are in a way that it can be written as um, a, a, function of, a, a function of x and function of y, which these functions are essentially CDFs of x and y, then these random variables x and y are called independent. Okay. So x and y are independent, identically distributed, or IID, so this is the abbreviation that you would see in, in many you know, uh, papers. If they are independent, okay, and have the same distribution. So if, if you see, for instance, in, in, a, in a reference that x and y are IID Gaussian random variables, it means that both of them okay, are Gaussian random variables with the same mean and standard deviation, and they are independent. Okay. Any questions? Okay, so another, uh, you know, Im important um, thing to, to compute for um, a pair of random variables is the uh, covariance uh, of x and y, which is denoted here by C sub xy, and it's defined as the expectation 
of x minus mean of x times 1 minus mean of y, mean of y, okay? And if we expand this and uh, using the linearity of the expectation operator, this is equal to expectation of xy, okay? Minus expectation of x times expectation of y, okay? So notice that these are all defined with respect to the joint density of x and y, okay? So, uh, for instance, um, xy is integral from minus infinity to plus infinity, integral from minus infinity plus infinity of little x little y, fxy, xy, dx, dy. Okay. So once we have the covariance of x and y, then we can define the correlation coefficient, which is denoted by uh, rho sub xy, okay? And it's defined by the ratio of the covariance over the standard deviation of x times the standard deviation of y, okay? And of course, this, this ratio, the correlation coefficient, has to be less than or equal to 1, okay? Why is that? So by, um, this is due to Cauchy-Schwarz inequality. This has to be uh, less than less than one. So um, one of the things that we would uh, deal with quite a lot in this course. Um, uh, is the notion of uncorrelatedness and orthogonality of two random variables x and y. Okay, so let's pay attention to this. Um, x and y are said to be uncorrelated, okay, if the covariance of x and y is equal to zero. Okay, so this means that essentially the expectation of x, y is equal to expectation of x times expectation of y. Okay. Or equivalently, the correlation coefficient is equal to zero. Okay, so this is by definition here. So the uncorrelatedness is just the fact that the expectation of the product would be can be factored out. Okay, but notice that the independency is, is a more general and in a, in a sense more restricted. Um, assumption where you say that the PDF or the CDF would be factored out. Okay, so this is just the, the expectation of the product would be factored out. But of course, if we have, um, you know, uh, independent X and Y, then automatically we have uncorrelated X and Y. Okay? Because if these guys are independent, the expectation of the product can be factored into two integrals uh, since my fxy can be factored out with fx and f times fy and then that those would be separate integrals and then it would cancel out the second term and you get zero covariance okay so two random variables being independent automatically you get uncorrelated but their inverse is not true okay so if you have uncorrelated random variables not necessarily you have the, um, them independent. Now, there is a third notion of orthogonality, and this is something that is, is of particular importance for us, as you would see you know, throughout the class. X and Y are, are said to be orthogonal if the expectation of X, Y is equal to zero. Okay. So, um, so for some of you who might not have seen this before, let me just um, you know give a quick example. Um, you can go through it, um, you know, uh, at home, and um, uh, figure out the details. So I, I go very quickly over this um, uh, example. So uh, consider random variables um, x and y. 
with the joint density fx of xy equals xy zero xy okay so here I define the density function of um, <coughs> x and y okay then I want to explore if they are independent uncorrelated orthogonal blah blah so um, so in order to do that I'm going to need to compute the uh, marginal um, densities so fx of x by definition is integral from minus infinity plus infinity of fxy xy dy now since I know the support is not from minus infinity to plus infinity I could start with the um, you know support of these guys dy which is equal to 2x and I know that x is from 0 to 1 okay um, similarly I can compute the um, fy of y which is equal to integral 0 to 1 of xy dx this is equal to 1 over 2y and this would be 0 y2 okay so now that I have the marginals and I have the joint density I can look at the um, independency con condition okay so <coughs> so here I have um, fxy of xy equals xy which is equal to 2x times 1 over 2y so therefore these guys are independent okay the joint density is equal to the product of the marginals now um, the mean of x can be computed you know in two ways from the um, marginal of x uh, for instance here dx equals 2 over 3 the mean of y equals to integral from 0 to 2 y f y y dy equals to 4 over 3 okay um, the, the variances are going to be the var x would be 0, 1, x2, fx, x, dx minus which is equal to 1 over 2 minus 4 over 9, 1 over 18. And similarly, I can compute the variance of y which is y 2 over 9 now in order to check the uh, orthogonality uh, I look at the expectation of xy which is equal to integral from minus infinity plus infinity of xy fxy dx dy notice that I cannot compute the expectation of xy by the marginals I, I need the joint density in order to do so and this would equal to 8 over 9 okay now since it's not equal to 0 then these guys are not orthogonal okay now um, let me compute the covariance So the covariance of x and y is going to be xy minus x times y, which would be 8 over 9 minus 8 over 9, which is equal to 0. So these guys are uncorrelated. 
but this was obvious because they were independent and once you have independence you get uncorrelatedness okay so we didn't really need to check this but it's just a verification Are there any questions? Yes? This probably just comes later, but roughly, why, why would we care if something's orthogonal or independent or covariant? Yeah, so it will come later. <laughs> Bear with us. Yeah, and, and we need it quite frequently. So, so. okay. Uh, so now that we know the notion of, um, um, you know, independency, orthogonality, and, and things of this sort, we can actually go ahead and, you know, rephrase all these in, in the language of a vector space formed by these random variables. Okay, so, um, um, uh, you know, in this course, we would often work with the, you know, uh, projection of a random variable on a subset uh, spanned by a bunch of other random variables, we would look at the convergence of a series uh, expansion of a random variable, for instance, in the mean squared sense. Um, we would work with the concepts of inner products uh, and orthogonality between random variables. And these are all concepts that we want, we, one has in, in a vector space and, for instance, in a, in a Hilbert space uh, of random variables. Okay? So, um, here I would just, you know, touch on it a little bit, um, you know, the concept of vector space of random variables. And hopefully as we go through the class, we would try to make it more rigorous and, and more complete. Okay. So um, I would just um, give you here, you know, um, a statement and, you know, a couple of definition, uh, hopefully to, um, to try to, um, you know, clarify this a bit more. Um, but as I said, you know, we would, we would make it more complete and uh, more clear as we go. Um, so uh, there's a statement here that all um, random variables uh, defined on, on a space omega fp okay, form a vector space. With respect to to addition and scalar multiplication. Okay, so you know once we set up a probability space, then we can essentially look at you know the random variables. Um, as vectors in, in vector spaces uh, or elements in the vector spaces with respect to, you know, uh, addition and, and multiplication uh, operators. So um, um, an, an important definition here is that, uh, for instance, the inner product space of <coughs> random variables with finite second order moment or finite variance so this is a very important condition <coughs> is denoted by L2 of omega Okay, so we have <coughs> the probability space here is omega, again, fp. Okay, so it's called L2 of omega. Or, so this is the short notation. And this is the complete notation is L2 of omega, f, and p. Okay. Okay. <coughs> Which is essentially is a... collection of uh, 
random variables x omega defined on the probability space omega f with measure p okay. satisfying the condition that integral of x2 x square you know in our notation fx but if you want to be more rigorous it's just p of x the x being finite okay so just in parentheses this is essentially x2 x square um, um, p of dx okay so this is more um, essentially <coughs> uh, uh, correct notation, if, if you will. Okay, so this means that um, the L2 of omega is consists of uh, random variables whose second order moment is finite. Okay, now uh, one can show that the L2 of omega is a Hilbert space. with the inner product being the expectation of xy or expectation of xy where you can define the inner product as you know um, function a functional that takes two elements x and y and returns the expectation of x and y um, and this is nothing but um, you know integral from minus infinity to plus infinity of xy fxy xy dx dy okay and this is exactly what we saw okay now of course you know this inner product induces a norm, okay, okay so x, y induces the norm, which is x to squared, okay, and so for instance, if, if the random variable x has zero mean, this is the standard deviation of, of the random variable, so here we are essentially generalizing the simple concepts of you know standard deviation and variance to, to a length of a vector in a vector space of random of these random variables okay and in this space we can define the expectation of x y as an inner product okay now uh, similar to the vector space um, you know in rd when we say that two vectors are orthogonal where we know that the, the scalar product of them is equal to zero okay here we can define the orthogonality of two random variables. So we saw that by definition, if x, y equals 0, then x is called orthogonal to y. Now, in the context of this Hilbert space of L2 omega random variables, this is quite natural, right? It's exactly the same as two vectors x, y in Rd being orthogonal, except that the measure associated with orthogonality is here different, and it's the probability measure in that space. Okay, so um, <coughs> so um, so here uh, I just want to connect to to things that we know. If if two vectors x and y in R D, okay. So we say that x is orthogonal to y. Is that if the inner product x y, which is equal to x is equal to y transpose x equals to zero okay this is identical for us in in the context of Hilbert space of random variables um, you know essentially saying that we have two random variables x y whose inner product 
which is the expectation of x, y, is equal to 0. Okay. Now, in this, you know, Hilbert space, we would see, you know, throughout the class uh, quite often that we can now, um, um, you know, talk about many interesting concepts, you know, including, uh, you know, bases in, in L2 of omega. For instance, we know that, you know, for, uh, you know, real functions, um, we have Fourier bases. Okay, if, if a function is in L2 of, uh, you know, the interval 0 to 1, you can approximate it, for instance, by some Fourier series, right? And uh, there is a notion of convergence to any square integrable function. It's exactly the same here. In this uh, Hilbert space of L2 omega, we can define bases, okay? And then we can approximate any square integrable or finite variance random variable as a series, as a linear combination of those bases, if, if, the, if the bases are complete, for instance. Okay. Um, so we will see these in, you know, in, um, in, in more details. Uh, or we could talk about, you know, um, approximation of a random variable x in L2 of omega. Okay. Uh, uh, for instance... you know, using a uh, linear least squares techniques, okay? So these are the things that, you know, naturally follow once we have, you know, a, a well-defined Hilbert space um, and, and because of, you know, the properties of the, uh, of the space. We could define, you know, things like, um, um, you know, projection operators. Um, since we have the inner product, so this also, uh, you know, naturally follows. Um, so, for instance, as far as the approximation is concerned, you know, I can look at things like uh, convergence of a series expansion of X with respect to, to some bases, um, um, uh, Psi, okay. uh, and the fact that in L2 of omega, this goes to zero, as I have, for instance, I goes to infinity. Okay, so um, these are kind of, uh, right now, not, not quite, you know, crystal clear, but as we go ahead, um, throughout the course, we would get more and more familiar with these, these notions, that how to approximate a random variable. Um, so, again, the connection is that everything is quite similar to the deterministic function spaces where you can, for instance, approximate a function uh, with Fourier series. Um, you can think of this as being a Fourier series. But here, the only thing that is different is that these norms and inner products are defined with respect to the measure on the probability space. So whenever you have inner product of two functions in... Um, you know, in a deterministic setting, um, two functions f and g is defined as, you know, integral from minus infinity to plus infinity of fx gx dx. Okay, so this is just the regular Lebesgue measure. Uh, and assume that this, uh, these functions are defined over r and are uh, square integrable. Now, in, in the context of... Um, um, you know, random variables or, you know, other stochastic functions. So F comma G is defined as the integral of, uh, for instance, um, F times G times the measure over F G, D, F, or D, F, D, G. So this is according to um, the definition that we had. So, of course, these random variables, F and G, could be function of you know, another random variable, X. 
then even the uh, the integrand would be quite uh, you know similar to um, to the previous case. Okay, so I guess we leave it uh, you know at this point, and then we look at the uh, random vectors, random processes, and um, the convergence of random sequence. Hopefully, in the next.